Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I have a slight problem that I wanted to share with you guys today. It's a personal issue, but I'm feeling comfortable enough to share it with you all. Now, I have an addiction. Some people do drugs and alcohol, and I do those things too, but the addiction I want to talk about today was browsing and buying project cars. Now, get this, right? So, I go to IA.com. I go to advanced search, I go to electric run and drive, and this is where it gets fun. This is an electric Ford Transit Connect. I had no idea I wanted an electric Ford Transit Connect, but suddenly I want an electric Ford Transit Connect. I want to throw some solar panels on the roof and live inside of it forever. Or this 2007 Global Electric, the wheels are all pimped out, bidding's at basically nothing as a scuff on the fender, and I call this the one the Sam Crack Special because then you could start your own YouTube channel Milking content about vehicles that have little to no damage. And my favorite is this 2016 Volkswagen e-Golf, which needs a front bumper, fender, and two headlights. It's an e-Golf. Drive it to work. Give it to your kids. Paint it in primer. I don't care what you do with it, but to sweeten the deal, use my new code RICH19. It gives you three months free without paying any membership fees so you could start bidding and buying on these cars today. So thank you, IAA, for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget to check them out on Instagram at IAA underscore auctions for even cooler cars that they have up for bidding. So in the last segment of this series, I struggled with some battery issues with the car, tried to get it running, didn't work, found out the battery had water in it, replaced the battery, and now it's fine. Well, meaning the car can read the battery, but it still doesn't actually drive. Then I ran into a security issue where the drive unit didn't match the body control module. To break it down, there's basically security information inside the new computer that I put into the car that no longer matches the motor, so the car won't go into the drive. So I had three choices. Either move a chip from the flooded circuit board to the next, call Tesla, or locate the drive unit that was from the good BCM that the car was purchased from. So I decided to find the motor from the cell that matches the body control module in the X. The problem is the BCM is from a smaller motor car, but I don't really care at this point. I just want to get the thing going. In another episode, I'm going to open the old motor to see if there's any water inside. Remember, this is what the last motor that was in the flood looked like. Let's drop this one, shall we? How's that look? Great. I need a breaker bar for this one. Just kidding. Ready? Okay. Oh, shit. That's up, and then I'll get the other one back there. All right, so now, now comes the fun part. D. 
damn. Holy shit. Okay. Ah. Okay, now the motor is out, you'll see a very obvious comparison in size. One is a sport large drive unit and the other one is a smaller drive unit. The larger one makes much more power, but we're not sure if it's taken on water or not. Now the catch is that the smaller motor and cradle was damaged in the last car, so what we have to do now is transfer the smaller motor to the good subframe that the larger motor lives in. We notice very quickly that the axles are much stronger and thicker in the larger drive unit. Oh, sh it, it is what it is. Yeah. Oh. It's like a crime scene. Okay, so here's the motor in the subframe, and we also did some wiring harness repair as well because the wiring harness that was in the old subframe was cut because it was in an accident. We installed the thicker and stronger performance drive unit axles in the smaller drive unit, but there are two major things. Number one, the cooling system is very different on the smaller motor, so I have to figure out a way around that. And the second one, well, I'm going to soon realize it in a couple minutes. Also, I realized pretty quickly that the third mount on the subframe for the smaller motor is different than the subframe mount for the larger one. So that's something I have to make sure to swap as well. But it's not easy to do after the motor's already in. And here, friends, where it gets hard, it turns out Tesla changed the high voltage cables between the drive units. So yes, there are different connectors that go to the drive motors now. I thought it would be as easy as taking the connectors that I have in the basement for my spare parts bin, but unfortunately not. I went on eBay and bought some cabling and a high voltage distribution block for the smaller drive unit, but unfortunately we ran into a little challenge. How do we get them out of the distribution block? Well, it turns out Tesla has a tool to remove the high voltage wires for $270, and well, there's got to be a better way to do it. Let's go visit Lee and Chris at Advanced Technologies. We're going to see if there's any alternative methods to removing that cable without the tool. We're going to take the spare high voltage distribution block apart, see what's inside, and this is the first time any of us has ever seen the inside of this revised junction box. So let's see what we could figure out as we go along. Yeah, get the... Yeah. Just like um, this guy. There you go. Thank, thank you. Ring, ring. You don't have a bell for that? Not yet. <laughs> Real gangsters don't need bells. <laughs> it's just a junction box. That's all it is. Remember they, had, remember they had that big ass box underneath the seats before? Mm -hmm. This is what the axe looks like now. Very simplistic. Yeah. All right, Lee, can you cut open for me? Yes, buddy. 
the festivities. Let the festivities begin. Yeah. Dakota, get out of the way. I love you to pieces, Dakota, mm. but... I haven't seen these dogs in ages. <laughs> and uh, use a chisel and pop the rest off. All right, sounds good. Break. You know, everybody online right now is probably yelling at us. Oh, I can't believe that there's no, where's the guard? Where's the guard? Where's my face mask? Where's my gloves? Right here where the edge of the screwdriver is only touches the, the cable nipple, if you want to call it that, the cable end. Yeah. So there's not much contact here. There was something else in there, but it went flying. Ah, no, it has a spring. Can you see that? So in this one, do you see almost like a, a spring for contact? Too? Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah, there's a spring in there. Yep. Want to wedge it out? Let's see if we can wedge it out without damage. I don't want to damage the good cables that you're trying to save. If you can't, don't yeah. even worry about it. I just don't or, or, just, or just cut the plastic to get the, yeah, or get the plastic to get it out. Still doesn't want to come out. That's coming out, coming out wherever you are. How to reverse engineer something with destroying it. All right, one cable out. Now that's the pressed boss that goes into the casing. That's that red collar or the, the black or red collar that they want you to twist. Gotcha. That's one of the other locking collars. Now let's get this collar off and it's probably the lock itself. We're gonna find out because we're just idiots right now. Someone right now in your comments is saying, why the hell did you guys just do that? Yeah. Well, they have a slate wall where you're allowing to get a tool in there to compress that spring or expand that spring and pull this off. Why am I overthinking this? Way deep in here, Chris. I say we cut this one, oh, but, we cut, but we cut more around it. We could salvage the- uh, Oh yeah, cut right here very easily. Yeah, so very lightly, it. so we could see it in action. Okay, I see the black. You see the collar, right? Dude, I feel yeah. like that shit would just, you just push that collar and would come out almost. Yeah, almost like if you could actually just get something. In there? That's a good question, Chris. Ooh, almost. So close. It was, and what size socket was that? That Is was that a 24, 24 but he ground that down. So it's going to be like around a 22. But that, 23 or 22, even maybe a 21 that's cut. You can cut. grind that down if you want to make it smaller. It I don't want to touch anything of yours. Yeah, yeah I don't blame him. Touch everything of mine. Yeah, <laughs> I want to touch that damn scooter. Oh, look at that. Ebony and ivory. You, you're not used to dealing with that kind of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Chris has fucking Sasha's fingers, man. I'm telling you, I love them. All right, yeah, we're good on this one. And that one. Oh, that's one would be nice. And That'd little, be perfect. Like, so sometimes you get. Oh, you're gonna cut it open. Yeah, cut it. Oh. It's gonna be warm. Yeah, it is. It's ah, sh <laughs> I knew it was gonna be warm. I just I touched it anyway. I don't know why I did that. Like I knew it was gonna be warm. Lee knew it was gonna be warm, and I touched it anyway. Again, it I thought I had Hulk again. hands. I was like, nah. You burn I thought I had Sasha's fingers like Chris. I can't feel anything. Look how clean those hands are. <laughs> what have you been doing? Nothing. Look at it's Lee's hands. Too much time in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking uh, for his tent spot to put it on Skid Row. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put this under the water. That foam is too Yeah, it's actually the foam. Uh, and they built it. They just used that rough roofing uh, foam. I think this is a two inch. Okay. So what did you do? All right, so let me actually let me see one of those cables. Yeah. So, in the housing, this slides into the housing. Right. This clip secures it in that fashion. Right. So the edge of the housing is here. Right. You just literally move this clip, rotate it about 180 degrees, so this and it pull it right out. This tank right here, right? Yep. All right, so put it in and give me a demonstration because there's not going to be much clearance in the other one. So it locks in, and then the ring goes on. Eight 
hate that. So I'm rotating. Huh. And you're trying to get away through those detents. There's four fingers or detents, they call them. Okay. Oh. That saves you a boatload of money, sorry, man. Yeah, boatload of money and time. That's it in the car. That's the battery Maybe pack. You can do it with, it's gonna take, it's gonna take patience. So, close it is right there. show me it again, Chris. Show me again. I want to see how to do it again. I'm out of your way. Oops, oh, sorry. Oh, sh I, I didn't see your leg there. <laughs> rotate the cable. You're rotating with, counterclockwise. With pressure. It. It's just, I don't, it, there's, no, there's no real direction. Just right. rotate it until it comes out. I'm just screwed. Okay. So, what happened to the junction? The junction box was probably flooded or something? They changed the motor size. That's a motor. Oh. The tiny so, going in. so these connectors, these connectors are different for the motor. Gotcha. So, so you need these connect, you need these cables. Yeah. Now, do you, are you sure that the junk, the other junction box, has this same connector? I hope to God it does. I, I hope it does. I'm thinking it does. Oh, I mean, at the end? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it does. I mean, it those, yeah. It's the same box, just the, the cable, these cables are different. These physical cables are different. Well, I sure hope I'm right, guys. Thanks for watching this episode, and in the next installment, you'll see whether or not the method to remove the cable worked. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week.